Hello and welcome to another standard game the video. Today we're taking a look at a red black kind of mid range control deck that's got some of the top end cards that we're used to, with Chandra Hope's Beacon being our main card draw engine and finisher, but also Breach the Multiverse, which is awesome when we can copy it with Chandra to get the effect twice, as well as of course getting Chandra back from our graveyard. So these two are kind of inseparable. And then the foundation of the deck picks up a lot of new tools from the Lost Caverns of Ixalan, with that one mana, the Greedy Freebooter. A 1-1, one, one, when it dies, scry one and create a treasure token. So this has a lot of similarities with Shambling Ghast, which ended up being a defining card when it was in standard, and we don't have quite the same 2-mana instant like we had with Deadly Dispute, but now we've got a Fanatical Offering instead, so we still get to draw 2, can sacrifice both artifacts or creatures, and instead of making a treasure token we get a map token instead, so we can still use that map token to maybe sacrifice to future Fanatical Offerings, and then of course the 2-mana instant is is also very nice with Chandra, since we can play Chandra, add 2 mana with a plus 2 ability, we might have a random creature or token laying around that we can then sacrifice to offering to immediately draw 4 cards and pull ahead, and because it's an instant we can also do so during the opponent's turn, so we can trigger Chandra's passive of copying a spell during our turn, and maybe again during the opponent's turn. That's also why Big Score is such an awesome card alongside Chandra. If we copy it, we essentially replace its mana, since we get to make 4 treasure tokens, and then we get to draw off four cards as well. So Offering and Big Score alongside Chandra are kind of the engine of the deck. And then we've got a pretty wide range of removal spells. At one mana there's Cut Down and Voltage Surge. Sometimes dealing four damage can be nice in the late game since we can sacrifice an artifact to it pretty easily. But there are certainly moments where you prefer Cut Down when facing let's say a Felden that you don't want to deal damage to. And can also be better when taking out an early Rafine which is a 1-4 when you might not have an artifact to sacrifice. And then at two mana there's Go for the Throat. One copy of Shieldred's Edict, a bit better if you're facing those Planeswalker heavy decks, and then an Abrade can also help take out an artifact, and then I'm also playing two copies of the new Molten Collapse, which is kind of similar to Dreadbore, Sorcery Speed, kill a Planeswalker or a creature. This also has the added upside of maybe destroying a non-creature, non-land permanent with mana value 1 or less, if we enabled Descent, which is not too difficult when we can sacrifice creatures or discard cards to our big score. And then a two copies of the Iron Crack for a bit of ramp. Charming Scoundrel can also make a treasure when it enters to maybe set up a 4-drop on turn 3, so we can already big score to ramp out our Chandra, or maybe cast a Decadent Dragon, a 4-4 Flying Trample, that can generate treasure tokens when attacking, and can also first use the Adventure to generate a bit of card advantage. And with all the treasures it's not too difficult to cast off-color cards from the opponent's deck. And then our mana base has two copies of the new Restless Events as a creature land that can also help us discard and draw, and then Field of Ruin to answer opposing creature lands can also come in handy, and then the channel lands Crucible and Takanuma can also help get back Chandra or maybe a Decadent Dragon. Now we could also try to make room for Shieldred of course, which would play well with a card draw from Offering and Big Score to stay alive against those red burn decks, but for now I'm trying without Shieldred since most decks are prepared to answer a 4-5 and it doesn't really generate immediate value like most of our other cards. So let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand's fine. Could go turn one freeboot or turn two offering. Probably just get this tap land out of the way first. Turn two we can freeboot or end voltage surge if needed. And I wouldn't mind taking out the officer, but we can maybe wait if something like Thalia shows up. I guess that's a reason not to play freebooter, but it does block the officer. So it's kind of a tricky spot. Maybe I should just pass in anticipation of a Thalia, so we can take it out and then next turn go Freebooter plus Offering. And I'll just take two for now. Yep. Alright. Glad we sequenced it this way. Because Thalia is going to be a bit of a thorn in our side otherwise. Hoping they don't have a second Thalia. At the very least we can sack Freebooter now. Adeline's also scary. Opponent's gonna attack. I could just trade and then use Offering on the Treasure token. That might be better. Opponent still gets to keep their 1-1. One, one. And don't need land, need something to answer Adeline.
All right, Molten Collapse will do. Although the rest of our hand leaves a lot to be desired. Could use a map token here. And a scoundrel would just be discarding and drawing. So at that point I think I would rather just go to the next card. Can also animate our restless vents if we don't draw anything useful. Back up Thalia. And a spellbook vendor also worth destroying. Alright, big score will cost me 5 mana now. Field of Ruin could be useful if our opponent's playing Mishra's Foundry. But let's do this now. Find another big score. Okay, so we're kind of on the back foot now. And there's another Adlin. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Don't have any real sweepers in the deck, so we'll just have to do it one for one. Chandra could maybe save us. I will trade for Spellbook Vendor here. And then a Braid can answer Thalia. Will cost me 3 mana, then we can cast a 4 mana a big score. Maybe that's worth it still. If I were to top deck Chandra, cost me 7 mana, can answer Thalia and Adlin, but then Chandra dies. So we probably have to deal with their other creatures first. So we'll start with the Abrade. Alright, Breach the Multiverse can help. Could also just play a Decadent Dragon right now. And then with an untapped land I can still cast Breach next turn. Because we might be facing a lethal if our opponent can put enough creatures in play here. And then I'm happy to trade Dragon for Adlin, but they might also have a Brutal Cathar. Yep, so regretting that decision. Now our dragon's exiled, so we can't even get it back with Breach. Alright, so let's see if this can save us. Milling a Chandra would go a long way, and we found one. So Chandra and the opponents can steal their Brutal Cathar. So what's our plan? I guess Cathar exile the token, Chandra take out Adlin and Cathar. That sounds... Good to me. Enough talking. Let's do this. And then we're just about stable here. Chandra can go digging for answers. So two cards left in hand and Adeline number three shows up. And a knight errant. Alright. So we'll have our work cut out for us. Need to find a spot removal spell of the plus one that we can copy. Or a big score. So I guess we can cast a big score since we don't have any cards in hand. So I have to use the plus one regardless. And find a different big score and a go for the throat. Alright. So we could keep up. Go for the throat to take out Adlin. Knight Errant, if they go for a big adversary, we can take that out instead. Could also just cast Big Score here, discarding Big Score in the hopes of finding more action, but that might be a bit greedy. And then we'll also have Restless Vents available. So I don't think Decadent Dragon attacks. And then we'll just keep up our interaction here, I think. Which also lets us transform our Brutal Cathar. So now I've got a 3 3 first strike, which is a bit better. Do want to take out Adlin before they get to make another token, of course. 24 cards remaining, so not too close to milling out. Yeah, that was kind of an impressive plus one, exiling five spells we could cast. 
If they top decked another Knight Errant, we might get punished for not killing their creatures first. Alright, opponent goes to attackers. And then we can just discard the next card we draw to big score to draw a bunch of cards. Opponent goes for a flyer. Now Skrelf giving pro red right now would be effective, but this will transform back. So we get to exile another creature with our Brulgathar. And I think Skrelf is the more annoying card here. Could also get rid of a token for good. Okay, so start by just using Big Score, discarding Freebooter. We might need the mana from Chandra. Could also decide to take out some one toughness creatures. Alright, perfect. Cut down so I can cast that during the opponent's turn. And then Chandra can plus one once again. Finding a Molten Collapse. So we can maybe save that for next turn. For now, Scoundrel can discard and draw. And then I think we start attacking with Decadent Dragon. Now I guess we have to be careful with this adversary, although we can cut it down in response to it pumping the team. So there's Adversary, let's just cut it down. And take out Phantom as well. And our opponent explodes, awesome! So managed to stabilize just in time thanks to a lucky breached multiverse. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Freebooter turn to a braid. Try and ramp into our Planeswalker here. Turn one island, so this might be a mono blue counter spell deck. Which, uh, yeah, it's not all that amazing because of Cavern of Souls nowadays. But it lines up quite well if we're trying to cast six mana Planeswalkers. So this might be a difficult matchup. A Braid also doesn't quite line up the way we want to against 4 and 5 toughness creatures. They might also be playing the new Alluring Scoundrel to one Flash Flyer. So that we can at least abrade. So we're not doing much here in the early game. At least we've got some channel lands which we can put to use later. As our opponent keeps digging, might see a one mana Tolarian Terror in a second. Finding something like a big score that we can cast when the opponent's tapped out could also be useful. Alright, Decadent Dragon. I think we just play it right now. It might get bounced by Fading Hope, but uh, it's nice to resolve it if possible. And I don't think the expensive taste is going to be very useful. Does seem like they have a Fading Hope. Could also just be another Consider. But if Decadent Dragon sticks around and attacks, we could already play a 6-drop next turn. Yeah, there's a Fading Hope. And now they could play Haughty Jin and still keep up a 2-mana counter. Gonna be Tolarian Terror instead. So... Opponent probably has a counter for Decadent Dragon now, so I'm not just going to run it out there. Could use Crucible to make a pair of 1-1s, or we could use the Expensive Taste, and we can at least pay for Make Disappear there. Thirst for Discovery. Maybe in response, Expensive Taste. While well, they can't use a 2-mana counter. So we'll need some treasure before we can cast these. I might actually want to chump, just so 
we can cast Make Disappear or Essence Scatter second main if they play another Tolarian Terror, for instance. Although I expect them to keep up an answer to Decadent Dragon. Do I need more lands? Okay, so let's try the Dragon here. And then we'll still be keeping up as a scatter for one of their creatures. Alright, that resolves. Might see another Fading Hope. And let's try to Assa Scatter here. Might be met by a Make Disappear on the Assa Scatter, but at least her opponent would be tapped out, so we can resolve Chandra. Yep. So Hardy Jin resolves. And we'll take five. Okay, so now what we might want to do is Chandra plus for mana and then double abrade the Hardy Jin. So we build up more loyalty. Then Decadent Dragon might as well attack. So we can maybe start there. Since I would be fine with a trade. Alright, opponent accepts. Alright, in that case we still want to resolve Chandra. Could use the plus one. So if I were to add mana, I can abrade, copy it, but I won't be able to pay ward twice, since we need to pay for every individual abrade. So that's not gonna work. So instead I'm just gonna plus one, and then we can keep up make disappear as well. Alright, that bricked. So we'll pass. Chandra's gonna take five. Next turn we can try and protect it with our Crucible. Gotta burn hotter. And another Hottie Jin. We can try and double abrade. Or double voltage surge is probably better. Keep our treasure. Opponent's gonna dig with thirst. Discarding Fading Hope, consider. So they could have used Fading Hope to bounce their own Haughty Jin. Opponent wants to negate instead. That's fine. Alright, decision time. So Chandra, if it adds mana, doesn't really do a whole lot for me, so I think we're just plus oneing. And Molten Collapse is perfect. So can double Molten Collapse here. Paying the ward. And taking out Haughty Jin as well. And then I could keep up Make Disappear, although our opponent's got a lot of mana already. So maybe we just channel Crucible and get in for two damage, since it's not like our opponent has any haste creatures. Flow of Knowledge, yeah, that's a scary one. Potentially a reason to keep up Make Disappear, so we could have countered if they didn't have a land, but they did as it turns out. So would not have been able to counter it. And a one mana terror. Alright, Fanatical Offering doubled withdraws quite a few cards. But it might be safer to double a braid now. While the opponent is mostly tapped out. And then I would need a total of six mana to pay the ward. So let's see. This might be a turn where we want to add mana with Chandra instead of using the plus one.
and a fading hope. Think this is our window to make disappear, or I can save it to counter another flow of knowledge by sacking a spirit. So we'll pass. And then the plan is to sack a spirit to the offering to draw four cards. There's a terror. I guess we'll draw in response. No turning back now. Couple freebooters can also help block and a go for a throat, also a nice answer. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. So pretty interesting back and forth here, but managing to resolve Chandra is all we needed. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. This hand is missing early interaction or something to sack to the offering. So I don't think I can keep, unfortunately. This is much better. And then probably get rid of one removal spell, keep Chandra to work towards... And uh, let's see if we go tap the vents, turn to go for the throat. Not sure between cut down and voltage surge, which will be more useful. Maybe voltage surge if we find an artifact can deal four damage. Turn one Phoenix Jigs up against a red aggro. Definitely gonna need those early removal spells. And we find a free booter as well. Yeah, tap the vents is an option. Could keep up voltage surge. Uh, for opponent plays Felden, I don't really want to damage it, but I uh, could just play an Adversary, which I'm happy to surge. And problem then is we can't play Go for the Throat on 2, so let's just go for Time Defense. And it's gonna be a Swiss Spear. And a Monstrous Rage, alright. It's a lot of damage coming in here on turn 2. So now we could just surge the Phoenix Chick and uh, play Freebooter. I guess there's no downside to waiting since another Monstrous Rage doesn't increase toughness on Phoenix Chick. Scoundrel. Going for a Wicked Roll on itself. Could take that out now instead. So we don't get drained for one. And then do we chump here? It would allow me to set a big score next turn. Which then maybe sets up Chandra on the following turn if we keep hitting our land drops. So that might be worth it. Although I could also just see go for the throat next turn being better. And then wait another turn on the big score. Have the option of using the expensive taste as well, maybe hit some mountains from the opponent. And there's Felden now too. Alright, so I don't think we can keep taking damage. Probably have to go for the throat something. And then if I jump I can play the 4-4 dragon as well. So we'll take out Felden without damaging it. And I'll keep a land on top. Hope they can't easily take out our 4-4. Four -four. A Witch Stalker Frenzy would do it. Oof, Nahiri's Warcrafting, haven't seen that one in Monored very often. But uh, yeah, pretty good answer to Shieldred, of course. Now we can play Chandra. have to deal two, which means they can likely take out Chandra on the way back, or, I mean, at this point they're probably just using their burn spells to kill us. Kumano deals one to Planeswalkers, and Adversary can put us to one or finish off Chandra. Opponent goes face, so any burn spell or haste creature could kill us. Start with big score discard offering, and then see if we want to add mana with Chandra or dig for another removal spell. 
Don't have any real life gain in the deck that we can count on. So I don't expect to win this. Okay, Scoundrel and a Braid. So we can abrade in the opponent's turn, maybe take out two creatures. I think I still plus one instead of add mana since we have plenty of treasure. Find a Molten Collapse. So go for Scoundrel and then maybe discard and draw. Okay, pass it back. Another adversary. Okay, that's fine. If they have another monstrous rage, we could get punished. Double adversary down. And a Kumano just kills us. Alright, GG's. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and our hand seems fine. We'll have to start with a tap land and then turn two we can freebooter plus voltage surge. And those treasures will come in handy to deploy Chandra. Now we can double Freebooter. And hope to find some of our sacrifice and draw effects. Opponent on Esper with a Denik. And there's a big score. I'll play Field of Ruin, can maybe come in handy. And then we don't have any great attacks. And then it attacks. I'll just take it for now. Even though I could double block and then play Chandra next turn. A wedding announcements, sure. Probably can't mess up their mana too badly with Field of Ruin. So I'll hang on to it to maybe destroy some utility land. And then, yeah, we'll just take our turn. Now we can big score discarding, maybe a land, maybe voltage surge. Then it hits for two. And our opponent could be holding up a counter spell, could be wandering emperor. Counterspell here on big score would be sort of painful. That resolves. And we found our offering. So it could just go for Chandra. And then make mana to cast an offering, which we can copy. That sounds pretty fun. And then I could still copy Voltage Surge in the opponent's turn. I wouldn't mind an extra land, maybe Field of Ruin not exactly the type of land I want right now, but I'll take it. Alright, found a Swamp. And plenty more lands, alright. So, play Freebooter, keep up Voltage Surge thanks to the treasure. Could technically also have passed and kept up Go for the Throat instead. And there's a Wandering Emperor, as we suspected. So I'll put an upkeep stop in case we want to Voltage Surge with their Planeswalker before they get a chance to activate it again. Let your blade do the talking. And I think that's worth it. Just um, 
take out Samurai and Emperor. Could also sack a map in order to take out Danik and Emperor. Although for now Danik's not bothering me too much. And our opponent explodes. Yeah, doubled voltage surge thanks to Chandra. And then next turn we can plus one to dig for more action. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand is acceptable. Could play Freebooter on one, or we can guarantee an Iron Crag on two. I think I'm happy with a Freebooter since we want to set up our fanatical offering. Up against what could be Red Aggro. And then next turn we hope to hit our line drop. Ideally go Iron Crag into offering. Opponent passes. Alright, in that case we'll attack with both Freebooters and uh, I think go for offering. Don't need another Chandra. Okay, found a land. Yeah, I'll play the Iron Crank here. And then ideally we save big score until after we deploy Chandra. Opponent taking out our Freebooter now with a Virtue of Courage. And I'll keep another land on top. So next turn we can already play Chandra, make mana, cast a Molten Collapse. Our opponent may be on a red-white burn deck with mechanized warfare. Okay, let's just play Chandra, and then I can use the plus one as opposed to the plus two. Time to light up the darkness. And we found a breach the multiverse, so that could be fun if we can cast it next turn. Mechanized warfare. They might have a burn spell to deal a little bit of damage, but not enough to take out Chandra. So, two mana. And then a double breach the multiverse, I think, is still the play over. We could also just draw a bunch of cards with Fanatical Offering, sacking the map token. Hoping the opponent has some creatures we can put in play, which is not a guarantee. Alright, our opponent explodes. We can have a look here, but yeah, at least the Heart Flame Duelist we would have been able to put in play. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. It's gonna be a bit painful against aggro if we need to tap the Sulphur Springs for red. Opponent red-black, and we found a Cliffs. So that takes care of that problem. Turn to Harvester. Got a few options here, probably just Voltage Surge it now. And then next turn, Iron Crag to maybe set up a 4-drop, like or Decadent Dragon. Although in this matchup I'm very likely to want to expensive tastes first. Either way, play Iron Crag. Creature lands are a reason why we have Field of Rune in the deck, and looks like opponents more of a sacrifice strategy. Yeah, Anvil is scary. We do have one Abrade to eventually deal with it, but not counting on it. So... I think this turn still go for expensive taste. Could main phase it, could keep up a bunch of mana. Uh, and then do it in the opponent's turn. Probably want to play the Cliffs here anyways. But I guess it's worth it to have a look. Alright, we can play an Epicure now. And that also synergizes quite well with our offering. A Mirax, another utility land that can give us some problems later, and now double Anvil. Okay, that's not what we wanted to see. Need to find Chandra into a braid as soon as possible. I will accept the trade. Point's probably just gonna sacrifice it. Nope, damage happens. Opponent gets two replacement tokens. 
and a draft to draw a card here. So they're likely playing Offering as well. Okay, so... Do we think our opponent's playing Act of Treason effects to steal our dragon and hit us on the way back? It's certainly possible. So that's maybe a reason to wait until I can keep up my own Offering to sack it in response if they try and steal it. And then for now, I can play Epicure, Scoundrel. Not a very efficient turn. So I think I do still tap out, even if it means potentially losing to our own dragon. At least this puts a bit of pressure on the opponent's life total, so we can hope to win a race. And it's not like we lack things to sacrifice to the offering. Third Anvil, yep. And offering Sacking Draft, so they get to draw three, make three tokens. Yeah, that's a serious clock right there. Okay, so Dragon probably wants to start attacking. Could also put a roll token on it, so it grows up to five power, making it a three-turn clock. But I guess the Anvil's also going to gain the opponent more life back, so it's unlikely to work out. So maybe start with offering, sacking a blood token to draw to. See what we pick up. Multiple laps does not destroy the opponent's Anvil, only mana value one or less. I guess it can take out a map token if we enable... Descend. So it's not at its best right now, I would say. So yeah, we can sack the map on the dragon to explore, play Scoundrel, keep up, go for the throat, doesn't answer their tokens either. Well, there's the abraid, that's what we need. So I can draw into it with Scoundrel. I might still need Chandra to double the abrades for it to be enough. Or we can just be satisfied with taking out one anvil right now. Which means discarding and drawing, attacking with a dragon for a treasure, and then we can cast it. So they can sack the anvil itself to still drain for one. So we'll take these trades. And yeah, we're out of card draw, just a blood token left. I imagine our opponent's got answers to our Decadent Dragon. Oof. Well, that might just kill us right now. They can deal four damage with each anvil. And we did not leave up Go for the Throat. Well, now we can go for the Throat. But, uh, might be too little too late. Field of Ruin can deal with their vents. Could also first use the blood token here. Maybe find something useful. So our opponent essentially has four damage at instant speed with Anvil. Big scores, interesting. So maybe I collapse the deepest might. But then they would still get to drain for foreign response. If I don't go for the throat now, would our opponent untap or still use anvil end of turn? They probably use anvil end of turn. So we can field of ruin the vents. 
and then still big score and go for the throat. I guess they could use Anvil in response to the big score here. And then I wouldn't be able to go for the throat in response to the 4 damage. So it's kind of a precarious spot. Let's see if they respond. They don't. Alright, play Freebooter, keep up go for the throat, and then... Hope our opponent activates Anvil so we can respond by taking out their god. Alright, good. We'll transform back, but it saves us quite a bit of damage here. So had they activated in response to the big score, we would have been tapped out. So now our opponent needs to deal 4 damage to us in order to transform it back into a creature. Opponent finds another creature land. So I'll block the construct. And yeah, we need a good top deck here. Chandra is one of them. So if we can actually connect with a dragon, Chandra can finish them off. So draft, draw one, down to seven. And braids, I'll just lose two life here. So we might get there. The witness finds another offering and freebooter. And this dragon's going face. Chandra can deal 5 damage, so even if they gain 2 here, we should be in the clear. Awesome, so a very cool way for us to reach Diamond here in the Rakdos Mirror Match. The opponent also implementing Freebooter plus Fanatical Offering, which I believe is going to be a very important combo in Standard going forward that's maybe currently a bit underexplored. The Freebooter having a lot of similarities with Shambling Ghast, which ended up being a defining card back when it was in Standard. Offering maybe not quite as good as Deadly Dispute, replacing the Treasure with a map token, but the combination of the two is still very powerful indeed. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's game. Gameplay. Want to thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And as always, have a nice day.